Gear Tasting Radio is brought to you by Imminent Threat Solutions. ITS provides knowledge that empowers individuals with indispensable skill sets to explore the world and prevail against all threats. Right now, as a special thank you for all podcast listeners, we're offering 10% off in the ITS store. Simply use the code GTR to save 10% at store.itstactical.com. Welcome to Gear Tasting Radio, where we offer an in-depth look into the usage and philosophy behind the equipment in our lives. I am joined today by Rob Henderson. Hello. And I'm Brian Black. Today, we are going to do one kind of big question over coffee. Just the whole thing. I got my coffee. <laughs> and I'm ready for this question. I, I'm lacking coffee, <laughs> but I'm ready. Hey, how come you never have coffee on? I, I'm afraid I'm going to spill it. No. <laughs> thought I'm it was going to be some big philosophical <laughs> thing. It's like, nope, I'm just klutzy. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I, I did spill something at Shot Show this year. Though we were sitting at a table eating at this Italian restaurant, and I knocked over a, um, one of those, like a water. Like it wasn't like a normal glass of water that restaurants serve you. It was like a. Was it like a refill jug? Well, it was almost like a wine glass, almost of water. You know, it wasn't well, like serves a, them right yeah. for serving it anyway, in a wine glass. I knocked that over, broke on the ground, and you know, people next to us. Did we're, they clap? We're overly drunk. Oh. You know, because it's Vegas. Yeah. And yeah, made a big scene. Anyway, okay, back to the question. So this question came in over email, and it's kind of a lengthy question, but I thought it would be a great jumping off point to really kind of devote an episode to what the question kind of revolves around. So the question is about minimizing theft, um, minimizing mail theft in an apartment complex. So this is somebody that, that lives in an apartment complex and they're having an issue with packages missing and mm-hmm. things like that. And on the whole, it might seem kind of like an easy thing to diagnose, but the more I kind of drilled into it and thought about this, the problem, it, it does kind of present um, some things that are very interesting to discuss on, yeah. on Gear Taste Radio. So I'm just going to kind of read through the question. It's a little long, but I do want to make sure that I get everything kind of out on the table that we can discuss here. So... Um, it really starts by by talking about you know PO boxes and why they're not an option. So I'll just kind of read through it. Hi TS, sorry this is a bit long. Even though it wouldn't make even the sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna start again. So here's the question. <laughs> Hi ITS. Sorry, this is a bit long, although even if it wouldn't be worth the effort to give me advice as an individual, perhaps others could benefit from this too. The topics I bring up could make for an interesting video for you to make or articles to write. With that note, I'll explain. If getting a P.O. box isn't an option, what do you think the safest option for receiving packages at an an apartment complex is? It makes for a complicated situation because deliverers treat small and big packages differently. They'll put small packages in my mailbox, which is in a public area and easy to break into, as for big packages, I'll leave them at my doorstep. I put a note on the door telling deliverers just to bring my package to the office, but they do so in a, about half the time. Thus, I'm left in a situation where a third of my packages go to my mailbox, a third go to my door, and a third go to my office. Essentially, two-thirds of my packages are at a high risk for theft. Ideally, I'd like for all packages to just go to the office. To eliminate one variable, I could just keep an empty package in my mailbox? Question mark. That way, it would be too full to receive more packages, and so it would hopefully force packages to either go to my door or the office. As for packages to my door, I could set up a security camera. However, do you think that that would just make me a bigger target for theft? After all, I'm the only resident with a security system. Thieves might think I've got something especially valuable to guard. I do have a security alarm set up for intruders. I had an additional idea, though. I could keep a music media, uh, keep music media playing while I'm gone. I mean, the, mo- the noise would suggest that someone's home, and I assume that would make thieves more hesitant to break in. Do you think it's a worthy strategy? I also thought about purchasing my own personal security mailbox to put in front of the door. However, I'm not aware of any highly effective security mailboxes. Do you know of any? Also, again, I wonder if such an object would just pique the interest of the thieves. With all that said, do you think, what do you think the, is the ideal strategy for me to minimize theft here? So a lot of information. Yeah. Um, I think it, on the whole, apartment complexes do present a pretty big problem when it comes to, to package theft. Yeah. So... If I can kind of break this down a little bit, I think that the big questions here are packages are coming to my porch and they're getting stolen. Yep. And they want to 
this person really wants to make sure that they're all put into... I guess their apartment's front office? Yeah, that's okay. what I'm thinking here. All right. So I do like the idea of leaving an empty box in the in the mailbox. However, that could, over time, garner the attention of the postman, and he, he'd say, oh, well, there's always something in this box. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, and then yeah. you know you kind of get in trouble for he leaving. He would just something end up in. leaving it on the doorstep. Right, that's what I think too. Um, obviously, we can't do any follow up questions with them. But my first question would be, why can't you get a post office box? Because you sound desperately in need of a post office box. Yeah, or a more secure way to pick up your mail, whether it's a UPS store, uh, a USPS post office box. But I think barring that, I'm wondering if they could get their mail addressed to the apartment's front office mm-hmm. rather than their apartment number. That's a good point, too. Because then the mailman doesn't have an option to deliver it to your apartment number. It just goes to, like, 123 Ferncrest Trail, like, mm-hmm. apartment zero right. or main office or something like that, you know? Right. And so I think that kind of the the, the big take-home with all this is that this person's looking at security options, and True. Yeah, absolutely. I think that at, on a whole, we could recommend you know a PO box or something right. to the effect. And I, I personally like the UPS mm-hmm. mail station because I had one of those when I was in the Navy, and it was great because I didn't have to put PO box on it. So oh, therefore, things like FedEx and UPS deliveries could still come to that. And that's one of the downsides of a traditional USPS post office box gotcha. is that you can't have nor some deliveries won't deliver they to just a won't PO box. Oh, right. That's a great point. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. That's one benefit of that. Um, the second is obviously you've got an offsite location that's going to hold all your packages. It's a little more secure, mm-hmm. but it can be it can definitely be a pain in you know oh, having yeah. to go somewhere and get your mail. Um, however, there's a lot of inherent benefits in having that separation from where you live True. and where your mail's delivered. So. First of all, there's kind of the inherent security benefit of not putting your address where you f- physically live mm-hmm. on the things that you're getting delivered. That's that's kind of a big plus because, I mean, bi- most businesses are reputable. There's nothing that will really come of that. But if you're ordering stuff on, like, eBay and from other sellers like that, now they've they've got your address. Which, that's very true. You know, most people aren't going to be able to do much with that. But at the same time, there is a potential for that. Um, granted, if you own a house, the, they can always look that up through like the appraisal district of your local city. So you know your if, public records. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, that aside, yeah. Coming back to the security angle, I don't feel like having security cameras sets you up for more theft. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like that makes you a target because you're more security conscious, especially this day and age. Sure. Maybe 10 years ago when security cameras weren't as ubiquitous as they are now, um, that might kind of go, well, why does that person need security cameras? Now it's really, I mean, most security companies will offer to install cameras. I mean, right. ADT's got them. Sure. You know, all the all the big security companies have those. Yeah. Um, and even fake cameras can be a deterrent. I mean, even if you put up yeah, fake cameras. I think cameras. cameras are definitely a deterrent. Um, also because, like, the guys from Ocean's Eleven aren't teaming up to steal your packages. It's usually like a chance opportunity. So if they were to see a camera, like you said, even a fake one, that's going to be like, no, let's let's not. You know, I don't want to well, be on the news. And honestly, many people, even with cameras, still do it. Um, if you look at all those dumb criminal videos, right? Yeah, I mean, it's some usually of them are like just some, opportunity. Yeah, it's usually like some husband and wife team that's driving around, and you know, the wife. It, goes up to the front porch, grabs the package, and breaks her foot on the way back to the I was going to ask if you saw that. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't want to derail us, but it's yeah, absolutely like, it's hilarious. the best. She breaks her leg. Yeah. It's immediate comeuppance. <laughs> oh, man. There's nothing be- better than watching instant karma take place mm-hmm. on, <laughs> on the YouTube. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, security cameras are a big thing. I mean, I found it interesting that this person is also kind of looking into a security mailbox and – that to me would be more of a, I don't know. It would be more of something that would stand out to me as a criminal. That's true. You know, if I saw some big lockbox on the porch and I go, "What is right. going on right there?" So I mean, I have thought about building one of those because mm-hmm. I have had instances where I'm away from home and I know they're just going to drop it on the porch, mm-hmm. and it bugs me. But like you said, it's either 
you make a box that literally no one can get into, mm -hmm. which is then like a 600 pound steel welded <laughs> box that you have to rely on the delivery people to know what it is. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of instances where um, drivers will pull up to the curb and just throw things at your house. So there's a chance that he may not even see the box that's on your porch. Um, have I told that story on Gear I'm not sure. Now? I'll tell that story. So another thing that I was going to bring up is the ring doorbell. Um, I think the ring doorbell is probably one of the best things on the market. Um, however, I did see yesterday in the back of a magazine an ad for the new Nest doorbell. So now Nest is making a competitor to the ring doorbell. So I find that very interesting that they're trying to enter that market space as well. Hmm. So the ring doorbell is a cloud-based device. And you can opt to use it in the cloud or just over your home-based Wi-Fi. But it's still using the cloud. It's just generating that from your home Wi-Fi. So you're able to get a notification on your phone when somebody rings your doorbell. And that's just one of the benefits. So you ring the doorbell, you get notified on your phone, and you get a video display of what that camera or the ring doorbell camera is seeing. Future tech. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. And it's it works really well, too. Now, granted, you're... You're kind of at the mercy of Wi-Fi, so if power's mm -hmm. down or your Wi-Fi is out, that's that's gone. That feed is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a, a potential downfall of that. But it also acts as a two-way communications device. So like the other day, I had a package being delivered from USPS that I knew was coming, but I didn't know it had signature confirmation on it. The USPS guy was just waiting there at the door for me to answer so I could sign for the package. And I was able to just pull that up and talk to him I was like, hey, I'm not here right now. I you know, apologize. <laughs> um, is that a package that requires signature confirmation? He goes, yeah, I, I can't really leave it without that. And I go, okay, well, what's, you know, when, when will it be back at the post office? You know, when can I do it? So I was, I was able to have that conversation with him and at least know what was going on. Um, so That's pretty impressive. And I asked him to put that notice in my mailbox. Oh, so instead great. of leaving it on the door, I said, do you mind just – slipping that in the mailbox with my nose like oh yeah no problem that's you know? great so that was kind of a cool thing because i hate notices being left on the door because that yeah. immediately tells people i'm not home right you know what i mean i mean someone knocked and no one answered yeah exactly so i'm not a big fan of those notices that drivers leave but so it's a it's it acts as a two-way communication device you've got the video feed but then it also acts as a motion detector so you you essentially go into the app you open a a perimeter application within the app and you can draw where you want that motion detection perimeter to be so meaning that if your doorbell faces the street you can exclude the street so meaning that cars driving by aren't going to trip the motion detection yeah that's and crazy literally cool. you get a notification if someone is walking up to your front door so they don't have to even ring the doorbell they just have to approach the door and actually not only do, do you get a notification there's someone at the door but that recording in the cloud starts immediately oh perfect so it's like I want to say it's five to ten bucks a year for this cloud-based subscription for mm -hmm. you to store that footage in the cloud. And I, I signed up for that. And me, I was like, yeah, you can store it there for me, and I can yeah. pull it whenever I want. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and there's no, there's no time frame on how long it stores that information in the cloud too, which is great. So that's cool. I've I've had to pull footage and send it to the police in one situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was able to just send them a URL. It's great. Like you've got a, a cloud-based URL that Ring provides for you for, oh, for that particular piece of footage. And you can even specify the start and stop time wow. on it. So it's almost like a YouTube video where you that's can impressive. get the, the timestamp on it. Hmm. So it's a, it's a pretty cool device. And that's one thing that I was going to recommend um, to this person so that at least you will know if something's happening. It's not that ambiguous. Like I come home at the end of the day and like, God, I feel like I should have got a package today, but there's nothing on my porch. Well, at least you're going to know mm -hmm. if somebody came by. So I like using that as kind of a checks and balances to know that, hey, I thought I was supposed to get a package today. Let me check the ring. Well, I didn't get any notifications like someone came to my door. Yeah. Oh, so I guess it didn't get delivered today. Yep. So I've had that happen before, too, where USPS will say they delivered it, mm -hmm. but yet there's nothing there. Right. And instead of freaking out and posting on next door like all my neighbors do, Does, has anyone seen my package? You know, I can be like, you know, I'm going to wait until tomorrow Give and it see if time. it shows up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a benefit of that ring doorbell, too. It's a great suggestion. Yeah. Um, it also doesn't look like a security camera. Exactly. Which I think and that's is super why I like helpful. it. Because, you know, her, to her point of like, oh, will it make me a target? It's like, not unless they get really up close to see that it's a ring. Yeah. I mean. I was telling a story, wasn't I? About the, uh, <laughs> yeah, about I the, the guy you caught. Yeah. So what happened is 
I had a package delivered from Amazon, but in my area, when you do next day or overnight Amazon delivery, you you know you can upgrade your Amazon delivery. Hopefully, everyone's kind of familiar with that. You can sometimes on Prime, you can go next day without having to pay even more. It's kind of included in your Prime, and that's what I had done. Well, Amazon in my area before they started using their own delivery drivers, and I I think that this is probably one of the reasons they started using yeah, their own delivery drivers. Um, they were contracting with local overnight carriers to to be that last leg of the of the overnight operation to deliver the packages. Right. Well, this was a place called Lone Star Overnight that was, I was delivering. Just saying, these are all places no one's ever yeah, heard of. Right. So this was kind of the last leg thing yeah. on the on the delivery, and I caught the ring doorbell um, on a delivery, and it and it wasn't anything to where I saw something going on during the course of that. It was that I came home. And there was a package literally laying on my sidewalk. I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, I never got the notice. So so it was an opposite of the other problem, right. which so, is where her package was there and exactly. you didn't get a notification. Right. So what happened is the person that was delivering didn't walk up hot or close enough to register the motion detection on the ring doorbell, and they left the package in a place that didn't register on it. So wow. didn't ring the doorbell, didn't walk close enough to register on the, the motion detection, and the package was literally laying there in the sidewalk. It's like, oh my god, this is the weirdest crap ever. Yeah, so I go, so I go yeah. back to the ring doorbell, and I'm like, oh man, there's no footage. So I pull up my security camera feed, and I watch the guy pull up, you know, walk halfway up my sidewalk and chunk the package the rest of the way. Which it didn't make it all the way to the porch, obviously, or it yeah. would have registered with right. the motion detection. So I was like, you got to be freaking kidding me. Yeah. So I called Amazon and reported it, and it's like, hey, this is what's going on. You know, they gave me the whole song and dance. We're so sorry for that. Here's your extra year of, or extra month of Amazon Prime for the problem, which you get, by the way, if you complain about it. Just keep any. at them. <laughs> You'll just keep getting Prime. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, I kind of left it alone, and, you know, it is what it is. And then the same thing happened. I upgraded shipping again. So what happened this time is that he – came up to the street so i watched him Mm -hmm. you know pull around and this time he literally threw my package so he knew i think he i think it was the same delivery driver i couldn't really tell but i'm pretty sure the first time yeah i think he kind of knew i'm sure he got some report from his boss that they found out that he did what he did or whatever Um, but this time he literally threw it like a frisbee um all the way to my porch and i was like okay I got you again, man. Here's the new link to the video. Yeah, so that's what I did. I actually sent Amazon a link to the video this time. Good. And I called Lone Star overnight and reported them too, and I haven't seen them since. (laughs) But uh, Now Amazon's got their own delivery drivers. Yeah, and now Amazon has their own delivery drivers. Yeah. So anyway, it can be really good for tracking down what's happening at your house when you're not there. Um, And Ring also makes other cameras too. They make some motion detection cameras. They make video cameras too. So you can get you can use that same type of technology um, for something that's not just your doorbell. So that motion detection and the two-way communication, as well oh, as great. the as well as the video recording to the cloud, can also be had with their other devices, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and if you don't want to wire them, you can get battery-operated ones. The only problem is you have to climb up there and replace the battery every couple months. Um, but it does last for a while, so that's, good. that's a that's an idea too. Well, and I think that the ring helps, or any camera system helps, because whenever a package is missing, there's that unknown factor mm-hmm. of it says it was delivered, is it theft? Is it just they said it was delivered and it wasn't, and they're going to bring it the next day? Did it go to a neighbor's house or something like that? Mm-hmm. And the camera at least gives you the ability to pull up the timestamp of the time and say, okay, nobody came up and took it, so obviously right. it's a delivery exception or something like that. Yeah, and that's really what security cameras in the past have been good for is kind of a checks and balances to go back and look when something does occur. However, they're, they weren't so good at letting you know when something's happening. Yeah, like right then. And that's the technology we're really kind of coming into right now is that now it's that instant notification of like, hey, someone crossed this perimeter, yeah. they're in your house or they're at your house, yeah. you need to be aware of you it. because pull up your phone and say, yeah. hey, put that down. Well, and the, the great thing about the ring that kind of got me started on this whole new way of thinking about security cameras and stuff is that, you know, thieves will ring the doorbell first. Like, they yeah. want to know that nobody's home before they try to break into your home. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's all about, you know, buying time, making your house a harder target, all that good stuff um, with security. But um, I think primarily in this example... 
this person is really looking for an alternative to to delivery. And I would say first and foremost, I'd recommend what we talked about earlier, which is yeah. the UPS box. Um, yep. That's probably the best bet. Um, second, get something that's got some type of motion detection and video capability and recording mm-hmm. uh, to use on your your Wi-Fi. That's good too. Um, and then even something as simple as putting some big planners on your porch so that when yep. they put packages on your porch, they're at least behind something. Because most, most uh, you know, drivers will take the time to they put will a package. Hide something, absolutely. Yeah, yeah yep. they will. Mm-hmm. Most of them aren't like Lone Star Overnight and Frisbee something on your no, porch. No, I've, so. I've had very well camouflaged packages up to a point to where I have to go hunt for it because yeah. I can't find it. Yeah. But I do appreciate that every time they do it. So, yeah, planters work great. Um and the, yeah, the and small I, packages thing makes me think that the mailbox that they're using is not secured mm-hmm. or locked. I know like at previous apartments I've had, it's a locked mailbox. But if it's not locked, I mean, you're running into the same issue there. Yeah. And I mean, I understand the situation. I remember sure. living in an apartment and always being wary of what goes on there. But, you know, if you take some of those steps... Um, Hopefully you can see the benefit in, in getting your mail off location too. There can be, I mean, even if you live in a house, just having your mail, you know, sent to a different location mm-hmm. can be pretty huge too. However, you really need to be aware of your surroundings when you're getting in and out of your vehicle and checking the post office box, especially if it's late at night and it's yep. dark. So there can kind of be some risk in that, um, that you're, you know, that you could be setting yourself up for by using Maybe something trading like that. one for another. Right. So yeah. that's kind of a tough call with that. Very true. Um, but that's kind of a consideration with that as well. But yeah, I mean, I think that kind of sums up, you know, what I wanted to discuss on, on this particular question. Um, you were right. It was indeed one long question over coffee. Yeah, no, I, I think it's cool though. Yeah, I, it's, I like it's a great the, point. I like that this person took the time to, to really explain their issue. And I think it's, gives us some good food for thought and I think everyone can learn from it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, I don't claim to have the you know, the 100% best answer to that, but hopefully some of the the things we discussed will resonate with some people on on how to uh upgrade their home security and things like that because really packages are a big issue. They're getting taken oh, all yeah. the time it, now. It's on the rise. Yeah. I mean, we see like we're talking about the dumb criminal videos all the time and that guy booby trapping you know, I mean, what, there's a reason there's so many dog of those poop videos. or something in yeah. <laughs> one of the boxes. Yeah, it's hilarious. But yeah, I love seeing criminals get Fail. Their just dessert. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Gear Tasting Radio. Remember, if you have questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on a social media network, and we'll find them and answer them here on the show, just like we did today. We finally got to a question. And be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts if you're listening to this on there. Um, You can also leave us a rating and review. It really helps the show for you to leave that. Hopefully, it'll be a five-star review. Those five stars really help us out, not just from a a ratings perspective, but they allow Apple to put our podcast in front of people that potentially wouldn't see it because of a better rating. So if we're we're not doing something that will garner five stars, shoot us an email. Let us know what we're doing. Uh, we love feedback, so support at ITSTactical.com. We'll get your email to us. And last but not least, check out our Patreon page. We've got a pretty cool thing going on right now where we've got some great rewards for you for becoming a patron and kicking in some money for the show. Um, this show is pretty much run by our Patreon page, and we've got big plans for it as well as kind of the gear tasting video show. So head over there, patreon.com slash ITSTactical. Thanks for listening, and we will be back next Tuesday.